In this video you will learn how to create this procedural peeling paint material in Blender that looks really good in both cycles and even. And as usual, at the end of the video, I will show how to download this material. So let's begin! We are gonna use the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial, so if you don't have it enabled, just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Node, and enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So here I have a sphere to preview the material. And on this side, I'm in the shader editor panel. And I'm gonna click here to add a new material. So let's start by creating the rust. I'm gonna add in a noise texture. So press Shift A, search for noise, and choose the noise texture. Then, with the node selected, press Ctrl T to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. But we won't need the mapping node. So select it and press X to delete it. Now, connect the object coordinate into the vector input. Then, connect the color of the noise texture into the base color of the principal BSDF. Decrease the scale to 2.2, set detail all the way up to 15, and set roughness to 1. And I'm gonna uncheck normalize. Now, add in a color ramp, and drop it here after the noise texture. Now let's pick the rust colors. If you want to use the same colors I'm using, you can copy the hex value of the color. I'm using Blender 4.3 in this tutorial, but if you're using another version of Blender, the hex value will be in a different tab. So for this one, it'll be 8C3D00. We can notice that Blender 4.3 adds this FF to the end of the color value. This corresponds to the alpha value, but don't worry about it because we won't use the alpha channel in this material. Okay, so for this slider, I'm gonna use a darker color. So it'll be 391E15. And I'll also click here on this plus button to add another slider. And I'll set the color to 611900. Yeah, I think it looks alright. If you want a more detailed rust, you can check out my rusty metal tutorial. I'll put the link in the description. But for this material, I think this one is just fine. I'll just add a gamma node after the color ramp, so we'll be able to use it to control the brightness of the rust color. This is just something that I typically do to add one more configuration option to my materials. So now we can use this value to make the rust color darker or brighter. Ok, now let's work on the mask that will define where the paint and the rust will be placed. So let's add in another noise texture. Connect the object coordinate into the vector. Now hold Ctrl and Shift and left click on the noise texture to preview the result. I'm gonna keep this scale as 5 and increase detail also to 5. Now let's add in a color ramp and drop it here. I'm gonna switch the interpolation over to constant and I'm gonna drag the white slider to the center. Actually, it's easier to do that by setting the position to 0.5. There we go. To control the spread of the effect, I'm gonna add a math node after the noise texture. And I'm gonna set it to power. Now we'll be able to use the exponent value to control the spread of the noise. We can also switch the dimensions of the noise texture over to 4D. Now we get this W value that is a seat for the noise pattern. Now to add the paint color, let's add in a mix color node. Drop it here after the gamma node. So the rust goes into the A value. And I'm gonna use the color of this color ramp, that is the peeling mask, as the factor of the mix color node. Control Shift and left click on the principal BSDF. The B value will be the paint color. But I don't want a solid color for the paint. I want a bit of color variation to make it look dirty and damaged. And to do that, I'm gonna duplicate this noise texture by holding Control and Shift and pressing D to duplicate it and keep this connection. I'm gonna set the scale to 0.5 and detail to 7. Now I'm gonna add in another mix color node. The color of the noise texture goes into the factor. Now I'll connect this result into the B value of this mix color node. The A value will be the main color of the paint, so I'm gonna choose a red for the paint. And for color B, I'll use the eyedropper to sample from the first color. 
Then I'll make it darker. Now to control the color variation, I'm going to add a math node between the noise texture and the mix color node. I'm going to keep it as add, and I'm going to use this value to control the amount of dirt. Now let's work on the bumpness to start getting the peeling effect. Now is when things start to get interesting. So I'm going to add in another color ramp. And I'm going to connect this math node into the factor of the color ramp. Now I'm going to add in a bump node. And I'm going to connect the normal of the bump node into the normal of the principal BSDF. Now the color of the color ramp goes into the height of the bump node. I'm going to add another slider to the color ramp. And this slider should be fully white. Now this slider can't be completely white, so I'm going to go to the HSV tab and I'm going to set the value to 0.995. OK, so this slider that is fully white should be centered or matching the position of the white slider of this color ramp. The black slider should be on the left, but it needs to be really close to the centered slider. So I'll set its position to 0.499. So we get this really nice edge. Now we can drag this slider closer to the other two to start getting the peeling effect. And with this slider we can control the size of the peeling effect. To control the bump node strength, we could use the bump node strength, but it kind of limits our control. So instead I'm going to add a math node between the color ramp and the bump node. Set it to power. And use the exponent value to control the bump and strength. Now we can make the peeling effect much stronger if you'd like. Ok, I think I'm going to set it to 0.9. Yeah, it's looking really good. Now let's make the edges of the peeling effect a bit darker to make the material look even better. To do that, I'm going to duplicate this color ramp. Control Shift and left click to preview the result. I'm going to switch the interpolation over to Ease, and let's adjust the position of the sliders. The black slider should be centered, so I'll set its position to 0.5. Now I'm going to adjust the position of the white sliders to get kind of an outline for the edges of the peeling effect. Now we need to mix this with the rest of the material. So let me create some room here, because I'm going to add in a mix color node. And I'm going to place it right after the gamma node, so the rust goes into the A value. And the outline goes into the B value. I'm going to switch it over to multiply, and increase the factor all the way up to 1. Control Shift and left click on the principal BSDF. Now the edges are darker, and I think it looks much better. We can also use the white slider on the left to control the thickness of the outline. If you want to see how it looks with and without this effect, just select this mix node and press M to mute it. And press M again to unmute it. The difference is subtle, but I think it's worth it. Now let's work on the roughness of the material. Let me make some room here first. So now I'll connect this color ramp into the roughness of the principal BSDF. Then I'm going to add in a mix color node. And I'm going to drop it here in the middle. And the color of the color ramp actually goes into the factor of the mix color node. Now the A value controls the roughness of the rust. And the B value controls the roughness of the paint. Now let's create some roughness variation to make it look more realistic. And to create it, I'm gonna duplicate this noise texture. Control Shift and left click to preview it. Click again to use the color value. I'm gonna set the scale to 1. 
Set the tail to 9 and reduce the roughness to 0.8. I'm going to add a math node after the noise texture so we can control the spread of the noise. Now I'll connect the value of the math node into the B input of this mix color node, that is the roughness of the paint. Now to control the overall intensity of the paint roughness, I'm going to add in a map range node and I'm going to place it here. So now we can use the two mean value to control the overall intensity of the noise texture. So now we have these two values to control the noise of the roughness. And I think it looks much better now. Now I'm going to add a bit of bumpiness to the rust. And to do that I'm going to add in another color ramp. I'm going to connect the factor of the first noise texture into the color ramp. And I'm going to add in a mix color node to mix the current bumpiness, that is the peeling effect, with the rust bumpiness that we are creating. So the color ramp goes into the A value. This math node goes into the B input. The result of the mix color node goes into the height of the bump node. And this color ramp, that is the peeling mask, goes into the factor. So now the new bumpiness is affecting only the rusty areas. But now, as you can see, we lost the edges of the peeling effect. And to fix that, I'm going to bring in a math node to soften the peeling mask before it reaches the factor of the mix color node. Okay, so I'm going to place it here. And that's enough to fix the problem. Okay, so now with this color ramp, we can adjust the look of the rust bumpiness. We can reduce the strength of the bumpiness by setting the color of the slider to gray. Now the last thing we're going to do is create a node group for our material. So I'm going to select all the nodes except material output. And I'm going to press Ctrl and G to create the node group. Let me just adjust the position of these nodes to be easier to work with them. OK, now we just need to choose the inputs of the material that we want to add to the group input. And we'll be able to use the inputs to customize our material. So I'm going to add the paint colors. And I'm going to add the value of this math node that controls the dirt amount. Now the gamma node to control the brightness of the rust color. The A input of this mix color node, that is the rust roughness. The value of this math node that controls the spread of the peeling effect. The strength of the peeling bumpiness. I think you got the idea. Now let me just show you how you can rename the labels of the inputs. Just press N to open this panel. And in the group tab, we have these group sockets. Now double click on the label and you can rename it. That's pretty much it. And this is the final material after adding and renaming all the inputs that I wanted. And I'm going to show you in a second how to download it. Let me just show you first the material applied to a 3D model. In this case, I also added some dirt on the top faces of the model. If you want me to create a tutorial on that, just let me know in the comments. Ok, now to download material for free, just go to my website artisticasset.com. You can download any asset there for free, you don't even need to give credit. The only thing that I ask is that you leave a comment in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This is the best way to support this work that I do. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.